we fasted Ramadan and um, we used to sit and read the Quran together uh, so this I was the first who started being serious about this religion and all my cousins and my sisters and my brother just followed after I met a Christian uh, friend who uh, told me about her story and her story was a little bit like my story. When I heard that Jesus died for my sins, it was like something fantastic for me. I've never heard about that. Even my own parents wouldn't die for me. My name is Naeem Fazl and welcome to our program, A Muslim Journey to Hope. In this series, we'll hear stories of Muslims who have found Jesus Christ as Lord of their life. I'm one of these believers and today you'll hear from another, Hanan. Hanan uh, was raised as a Muslim and she practiced Islam by praying five times a day, each day, um, fasting during the month of Ramadan and giving zakat. Nevertheless, she found that she had no peace in her heart her relationships with other people became strained. Uh, her problems seemed to grow and grow. Eventually, she got involved in witchcraft and consulting witch doctors. Although this isn't a practice encouraged by the Quran, many Muslims have gotten into witchcraft and magic. Many have come under the power of evil spirits. If this picture describes you today, Please listen carefully to Hanan's story. There is a happy ending. Jesus Christ set Hanan free from her sins and her spiritual bondage. I believe he can do the same for you. Let's watch. I used to, to pray five times a day and to read the Quran. Um, I, I bought all kinds of books about the Quran and I was trying just to to understand it and we all went sometimes to the mosque and uh, we fasted Ramadan and um, we used to sit and read the Quran together uh, so this I was the first who started being serious about this religion and all my cousins and my sisters and my brother just followed after. And we became quite religious family. I used to pray and pray and even talk personally to God, which is a new tradition in the Islamic religion, is that you can talk to God, why not? Not just pray five times a day. I started talking to God and just expressing my feelings and I was worried, that especially that I used to think if I'm going to paradise or to hell, and this idea made me feel much, much better because I didn't have the assurance that I'm going to heaven because nothing in the Quran gave me this thing. So there was this uncertainty when it comes to hell or heaven. I used to have a dream about the day of judgment and things didn't go well for me even though I used to just to try to be a good person but I felt no there is something missing in the picture and I couldn't figure out what is missing. At a certain point things really went very very bad um, I could see evil spirits so I was really tormented and I couldn't feel peace. I read more the Quran, it didn't work um, until um, I met a Christian uh, friend who uh, told me about her story and her story was a little bit like my story. She used to have a lot of problems. She was not Muslim, but she had her story looks like my story a little bit. 
and she gave me the Bible and I started reading the Bible and she prayed for me and actually I, I, I couldn't understand the Bible because I, when I started reading it the first time I, I was not really involved. I, for me, yes, it's the Bible and I, I read it just to improve my English. It was not, and there is something else is that I, I've never doubted that the Quran was the word of God and this is, this was one major obstacle until I, I read the Bible and I had people just explaining to me certain basic things and then when I started praying with her I felt that things became really great it was a tremendous change I could feel God, I could feel there was someone listening to me not like when I was into the Quran I couldn't feel this presence so and then one day I said okay this is what I am looking for especially that the thing that I couldn't understand before is that or I didn't know is that Jesus died for everybody's sins so when when I heard that Jesus died for my sins it was like something fantastic for me I've never heard about that even my own parents wouldn't die for me so it was a sacrifice which really um, just made my my heart uh, smell so and then um, of course I, I was I, I didn't look backward I didn't look at the Quran I was just immersed in reading the Bible and I didn't think about my, my background because I found already what I was looking for. I thought that Jesus belongs only to Americans and to Canadians and but and then when I heard about that it was just I said, Oh this is great. I mean he just promised that I'm going to go to heaven once I accept him as a savior. I was a little bit confused but uh, actually it didn't last for, for a long time because I found my way and um, then I discovered that now the Bible is, is the truth and the two are so different, one of them should be true and one should not be the true thing, so here I had just to, to choose, but then I, I discovered that the Bible is the true word of God. I, I, I didn't have any doubt that the Bible is the true thing. So I started going to the church and up to the third or fourth time. Once I was at the church and the pastor was talking about Jesus as being humble and gentle and he can he carries uh, our burdens and then I don't know how after the, the sermon finished, I went and just, I bowed down and I prayed and then the pastor and came and prayed for me and he prayed that God would direct me and guide me to the right path and at that time I accepted Jesus and it was just a very beautiful experience and it's, um, I can never forget that. The joy I felt when I accepted Jesus was something that I cannot describe because it is beyond any human imagination. Jesus really changed my life. I, I used to be lost and I used to seek help from people and going to the, these uh, witch doctors who just take money and promise things that would never happen. and. But now I feel that I am free. If I have a problem, if I have a burden, I just pray and talk to Jesus and he will give me peace about that. So, And the most important thing is that even if I die today, I know that I'm going to heaven because for me going to hell for the eternal life is just an idea that ruined my life and I don't think that anybody wants to go to hell. Already the idea of uncertainty is not a good one. So now I feel peace because I know if I die tonight, today, I can go to heaven without any problem because there is someone who paid the price and 
he and I, I can just live with him forever. And um, I, I don't really now um, give a lot of importance to to this world. Yeah, I work, I do my best, and I, I live this life. But the things that I used to see as very, very important are not really important anymore. So it's kind of having peace again, because if we love this world, we won't have peace because we won't have enough this joy and this peace and this just a new life and the assurance that there is you are not by yourself there is someone who is helping you and Jesus is here even in times of trouble so my view of life just changed I used to be bothered by my problems and but then even when I had a problem I I don't really worry I know that there is someone just with me and he's going to solve this problem and of course um, as I was reading the Bible I, I found a lot a lot of good things and I found that really the words are very deep and they are real and they are not empty words so it's I had this deep uh, confidence that this is from God and and just to think that God is love is another thing that as a Muslim I didn't know. As a Muslim for me God was very severe, he's all the time angry, he's, even if you do whatever you can, he's not going to be satisfied. But God in the Bible is very merciful, even if you are not even if you sin, he, he, he is ready to forgive you and just to, to sustain you. And so this is how I view God and this is how I feel God looks like. Jesus saved me from not only from spiritual death, but also from witchcraft, which is really very, very uh, harmful and um, he just he's, he gives me peace. His grace is upon me all the time. He watches over me. So, and there is only there is only way to the truth is Jesus. And for everybody who has a problem or who has doubts about um, where we are going another day. Uh, it's really important to consider that Jesus is the light and he is the only way and there is no other way of having an eternal life except Jesus. The thing that I want to share with my Muslim friends is that there is no peace apart from Jesus. Um, we, we seek God because we seek peace and we want to have eternal life and to go to heaven. But Jesus is the only way. Many people try just to be perfect and to do good things, but really it doesn't work. We should read the Bible and everybody should read the Bible and then make a choice not to regret later on that we missed an opportunity. So it's really very, very important that you just read it and then you have a clear conscience about it. So just pretending or saying the Bible is not the true thing or it has been changed, this is, I think this is just a prejudice. We should look and analyze things and examine and then take decisions. Nobody can understand um, how Jesus changed somebody's life until he experiences the, the spiritual thing because really the, um, there is a big difference between not being a believer and being a believer in Jesus because he gives peace, he, he gives everything we need. I want to express my appreciation to Hanan for sharing her life story, her journey to hope. Jesus Christ has delivered Hanan from her problems. Don't misunderstand me. Hanan, like everyone, had problems and challenges in life. She will continue to have challenges. 
But now she is able to face them with the peace and strength that God has given her. I want to focus on spiritual bondage and spiritual oppression in the remaining time together. Perhaps you feel that God is far away and the devil is closer to you than God. Maybe you have been talking to jinns. This is a common way that Muslims get themselves into spiritual bondage. Do you know that we are body, soul, and spirit? The body is a physical part that you can touch with your hands and see with your eyes. It takes up space here on earth. Your soul includes your mind, your will, and emotions. Your spirit is a non-material part that interacts with other spirits. God Himself is spirit. And His intention is that your spirit would be protected and overshadowed by His spirit, the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, many people, including Muslims, open themselves up to evil influences. This can create spiritual bondage, oppression, and even possession by the devil. Some Muslims ask for prayer from the devil and jinns when they pray Surah Nas, the final surah of the Quran, 114, ayah 1 through 6. Say, I seek refuge with the Lord and the cherisher of mankind, the king or ruler of mankind, the God or judge of mankind, from the mischief of the whisperer of evil, who withdraws after he whisper, the same who whispers into the hearts of mankind among jinns and among men. This is an early Meccan surah that Muslims include in their prayers. It highlights the fact that people are vulnerable to deceptions or whispers of the devil. While some people believe that jinns are helpful, this in fact is not true. And talking to jinns can open up your spirit to evil influences. The only spirit that God wants you to talk to is himself. Witchcraft is a form of rebellion against God. Also mentioned in the Quran, King Saul was a king of Israel prior to King David. God appointed Saul to be king. Even when he was serving God, he rebelled against God and became under spiritual bondage. The prophet Samuel rebuked Saul, as we read in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. For rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Saul then goes to consult a witch, leading to his spiritual downfall. If you have invited evil spirits into your heart, there is still hope. If you have participated in witchcraft or magic, you need to repent. Jesus Christ can deliver you. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. The hand of Fatima cannot protect you. Painting your windows blue will not spare you from the evil eye. The color of the prophet green will not save you from evil spirits. Pilgrimage to holy places cannot drive away the devil. Wearing charms that include ayats from the Quran is just another form of magic. None of these things can protect you from the evil. F who will protect you? Jesus Christ can if you invite Him to live in your heart and fill you with His Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ died on the cross not only to pay for your sins, but also to destroy the power of the devil. The Bible speaks about Jesus in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 15. Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. When one side wins a war, it immediately disarms the other side. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he broke the power of sin and the power of the devil. If you will identify with Jesus Christ's death on the cross, you will also identify with His victory over evil spiritual forces. Instead of being tormented by the devil, 
you can become a person who pushes back the power of evil like Hanan does now. Jesus Christ told his disciples in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 19 and 20, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Christians are also warned in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened by the yoke of slavery. You must become a child of God and a disciple of Jesus Christ before you will be filled with the power of God. This is the life story of Hanan. When she found out that Jesus died for her sins, her life was changed. The joy she experienced was beyond what words could describe. Yes, Hanan still has challenges to face. We all have problems to overcome. Whether you are a Christian or a Muslim, you will still encounter problems in this world. That is the nature of life. However, God can protect your spirit. The prophet Isaiah records this promise of God in his book of prophecy, chapter 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt, and the flames will not set you ablaze. These promises speak of a physical protection, but the application is also of spiritual protection. My prayer for you is a prayer found in the Bible in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word sanctify means to set apart or be holy. In the Bible, the book of James also tells us in James chapter 4, verse 7, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee you. Perhaps you are trying to resist the devil in your own strength. The devil is stronger than you and me. But Jesus Christ is much more powerful than the devil or any demon. If you submit your life to God, you can experience this power. The true submission is not bowing your forehead on the ground at a, in prayer at a mosque. The true submission is accepting the great gift of salvation God has given to all who trust in Jesus Christ. Have you made the true submission. We have covered a lot of verses in the Bible that deal with spiritual conflict and victory. I have done this because I do not want you to rely merely on my ideas, but on what the true Word of God tells us. But keep in mind, it all begins with turning away from your sins and self-centeredness and asking Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Quoting from the Bible will not save you if you do not know the God of the Bible. If you'd like to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, into your heart, and into your mind and your soul, just take a moment and say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior. You are the Savior of the entire world. Come into my heart and cleanse me from my sins and, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I need you to be the master of my life. I know that you are the Son of God and I ask you to come into my life. If you feel you have opened your spirit to the influences of evil spirits, please pray this prayer. Lord, I ask your forgiveness for opening up my heart to darkness. I renounce that power and turn away from my sin. Please deliver me by the blood of Jesus Christ. Say 
this simple prayer of faith so that you can walk with Jesus Christ in a new life, a new joy, a new hope, and a new peace. He will reveal Himself to you. Just pray this simple prayer, and He will. We would like to encourage you in your decision to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Or if you still have questions, please visit our website, muslimjourneytohope.com. You will find some materials that will encourage you in your walk. There are books and other testimonies and basic questions and answers about the Christian faith. You can also email us any questions, thoughts, or concerns that you may have. We hope and pray that this will encourage you in your new walk with Christ. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you will join us again next time. May God be with you and bless you. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for today and for this show. God, I pray that you would just bless the people that are watching the show. Lord, uh, I know that you're working in their hearts and in their lives. And God, they need courage, courage to step out and do the right thing. Uh, courage to follow their heart because their heart is telling them that there is something more out there. God, that you are trying to get their attention. And Father, I pray that you would give them the courage to do that. Father, I also pray that your presence, Lord God, would be so strong in their lives and uh, in their hearts. God, I pray that, Lord, as they seek after you, they would find you. God, we love you. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Nobody can understand um, how Jesus changed somebody's life until he experiences the, the spiritual thing because really the, um, there is a big difference between not being a believer and being a believer in Jesus because he gives peace, he, he gives everything we need. Thank you for watching this Inspiration on Demand presentation. Please come back often to watch what you want, when you want it. Be inspired.